Hi everybody, I'm back. Um, I want to talk today about something that just sort of irritates the crap out of me. Well, a couple of things that irritate the crap out of me. Anybody who knows me knows I can get irritated. Um, it's, it's about what cancer strips from us and our families. Um, it takes away dignity. Um, people are not always in a position to ask for help. Um, I think like, let me talk about finances first because I wanted to tell you about my status first. Um, I so appreciate when I was getting GoFundMe and Venmo donations. Um, I don't need that presently, but I really appreciate it. It got me through chemotherapy. It got me through recovering from, um, from surgery. It got me through, uh, medical bills, uh, on top of regular bills. And I just really, really appreciate it. Um, and you know, I'm caught up. I've also been, uh, approved for social security. Now, Social Security is not much, and there is a waiting period, but at least it's something that I'm looking toward. Um, and I'm able to work part-time to supplement that, or vice versa, it supplements my work. Um, I, I, Not everybody is in a position to be able to be okay. I had cancer 20 years ago, for instance, and it was hell because I didn't have a lot of money at the time. I don't have a lot of money now, but I had really bad insurance. And um, it, it, I was on a payment plan, for goodness sakes. I truly believe, and I know I got off track because I was gonna talk about my finances, but I'll, go, I'll get back to it. I truly believe that nobody with cancer or any terminal illness or even not terminal illness, no one with a serious illness should ever have to worry about anything except healing or enjoying the time they have left. This country and so many countries, they just, they don't put their people first. I mean, the USA supports more people impoverished outside the country, in other countries. We give so much money to other countries that we don't take care of our own. It's horrible. I don't care what candidate you're, you're interested in, you know, it just none of them. And it will never happen. I can't imagine it ever happening, but maybe, well, definitely not in my lifetime and maybe not in yours, but we can hope. In any case, I think it's just terrible. I, I mean, I, this time around, I feel blessed, good insurance, a husband with a decent job. And not everybody goes through this with a partner. A lot of people are single and you know, they, they can barely make ends meet to begin with. Um, I was on a payment plan probably for three years, you know, the last time around this time I can, kind of keep on top of it. The other thing is we didn't have GoFundMe or, or sources to ask for help. Um, I had even reached out for government programs and since they said I was going to make it, then, you know, I wasn't terminal then. So they didn't help. I know there was programs somewhere. I was in Virginia at the time, by the way, I know Pennsylvania has some better programs for people. They take a little bit better care of their elderly, elderly, but there's still a lot of problems with their elderly and their disability programs. Um, so uh, I'll get off one soapbox and then I'll get on the other. My situation is that I split the bills with my husband and I don't like wavering on that because he's also got child support and it would be a lot for him to take on all the bills. The only bills we don't split are car payments and credit cards. Um, but otherwise we have a joint account and you know, it takes care of things usually. Uh, so it got a little wonky in this past year. Um, but, um, 
once I get the social security and I'm allowed to make a certain amount, I can never work again. I'm not like I used to, not those hours, um, but I can make some money. And uh, so I'm going to keep my GoFundMe account going and I'm going to keep the Venmo uh, information up because at some point I may ask for it again. And if somebody wants to buy me a cup of coffee now, that's fine because I don't have like I'm living within my means, which is a little less than it used to be. It's okay. I can accept that. You know, I'm getting older and I'm things just, I like things that are simple. I'm not a big shop shopaholic. I'm not, you know, I mean, I like clothes, but I'm happy to go to like Goodwill, you know, as long as it's a nice uh, garment, I, I, you know, that's fine with me. I'm not that proud, but, um, you know, I, I feel bad for some people that are really struggling. Um, and, and in any case, I, I just feel that it's just so sad that we don't take care of our people. Okay. And that there aren't programs that are just a little bit, I don't know, meteor. Um, it seems like like, for instance, Social Security program. Okay, so there is this poverty level nationwide that changes the number a little bit every year. That's what they give you. They give you the poverty level. I mean, I'm glad that there's a, still a work program because I'm going to need that. At some point, I won't be able to work. At that point, I might ask for donations again, which leads me to another issue. Why do people have a problem with GoFundMe accounts? I've seen three YouTubers just trashing other people just for the sake of trashing. And it's not, I'm not talking about bullying. That's probably another video. But I, I don't understand when people don't have the facts and, and it, it boggles my mind um, that, you know, so-and-so is asking for money and, you know, maybe we should just give all our money to cancer patients. And I got one or two comments that were a little off color, but, you know, I just delete them. But, I, but it, I've been lucky with that, I've seen other people that have been trashed a little bit. And the fact is that nobody really knows I'm here yet. <laughs> so, but if they're going to come for me, go ahead, come for me. That's fine. That's fine. Um, I just try to keep my nose under the radar. Um, but it's not something I haven't dealt with in the past in my life, whether it's one topic or another. But you know what? People just hurt each other and it's just wrong. Um, I mean, even, even without talking about people asking for money and I, I thank God that GoFundMe and Venmo donations, I, I, the resources available. I, if it was 20 years ago, you know, when we were just into the internet, I, you know, might not have suffered so much back then. You know, and you know, it's kind of like, how do you judge that without walking a mile in someone's shoes? I may look okay. You know, I mean, somebody might say, go get a job. Well, I do work, but I don't have the energy anymore. When I'm off camera, you don't really see me. I'm still putting on my best face while I can. Mocktail. And um, I think it's very sad. And I'm not going to name names, um, but I'll just give you an example. I will name the name Jenny Apple for. Um, I saw someone do a reaction video. And some reaction videos are great. They're constructive. But others are just out to hurt other people. And... Um, Somebody said that, you know, 
if you don't know Jenny Appleford, she had terminal cancer. She passed away. Two weeks before she died, somebody said, oh, isn't she just a drama queen? <laughs> That's horrible. There are people like out there with black hearts. Anyway, it upsets me because could there be people out there asking for money when they don't need it? Sure, it's possible. There's a lot of scum out there. Um, but I know what's in my heart. And I know it's not black. And I feel bad for anybody that, you know, gets ridiculed. But they just have to know they're still loved. Um, so when I felt really bad about that with Jenny and, um, and they also judged her GoFundMe account and her and Kyle had three children. They needed the money more than a lot of people. Okay, off that soapbox. You know, we would like to talk about reacting, react, some reaction videos. There's people that make a lot of money doing that. I will not be one of those. But I'd like to do that sometime. So anyway, that's my status for Social Security Disability. I will start getting paid in July. I'm okay till then. I um, have a couple of medical bills. I don't expect too much. For a little while so I guess I just really wanted to let you know that I'm doing well um, and at some point when I can no longer work I will definitely be asking for help again and you've come through for me twice and at that point, I have to tell you that like, I don't have life insurance and I'd like my husband to keep the house. Why don't I have life insurance? Because I'm a diabetic and even through his employer, once you put diabetic down, they go, sorry. And it's been like that for years. I've been a diabetic since I was like 33. Even if I had life insurance then, I, and I think I did, there's, you know, life changes so much. Um, you change jobs and things like that. And it's that's a, another thing that's just wrong with this country. We don't take care of our people. We are like most families, and I'm just going to make this bet. I will bet dimes to donuts that most families in this country are just one illness away from bankruptcy, losing their um, nest eggs, um, and going into debt. Cancer like costs millions of dollars for some people, not them personally, but the insurance companies. And the insurance companies are not paying it all. So, you know, you're left with thousands and thousands of dollars. I'm going to give you an example. My ex-husband, not Chris, um, but my ex-husband and I used to live in Gettysburg, PA, Gettysburg, PA. And I don't want to assume everybody knows where Gettysburg is because a lot of people are not in this country. Just want to say that. Um, and he had a heart attack. And he was working full time and had insurance. We went to the hospital in town and apparently they did not have a very adequate cardio department, which really upset me because you're a hospital. And this turned out to be a very garden variety. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. It wasn't a complicated heart attack. Meanwhile, they airlifted him to another hospital. Was, he was up in the air for about 15 minutes. He was in the hospital for about three days. They put one stent in him. And I got the bill from the helicopter company before he got home. And it was almost 
$1,000. This was about 15 years ago. I can't even imagine what it is today. I really felt like Gettysburg should have written that off. It's not anybody else's fault that they have an inadequate, you know, department. I mean, I, I don't know what that was about. But his insurance wouldn't pay it. I don't know if they would have even paid a, an ambulance because it would have been a long ride. We, I, we ended up fighting it and got aid for it and they were able to write most of it off. Thank goodness. Cause that we didn't even have that in savings, you know, and, and they just billed us directly. They didn't even go through insurance. So they knew insurance wouldn't pay for it. It was, it's horrible. It's horrible. So this country needs to be fixed. And I can't do it alone. <laughs> right, dear Congressman, uh, it just seems to be fruitless, you know? Um, and that's why we're here to help each other. It was very hard for me to ask for help when I opened the GoFundMe account. And I had two GoFundMe accounts. The first one was through with the, uh, the chemotherapy and then, and I closed it. And then when I had surgery, I put out a new one. This one that I have now, I'll just leave it there. But I, I am so grateful that it was available. And I ended up getting a little less shy about asking for help and realizing that humbleness is a quality that we should all have. There's a time for pride and there's a time to be humble. And I've been humbled. There is no doubt about it. And just living uh, within your means, when your means go down a little bit, okay. I'd be upset if I was younger and, you know, liked all the material things in life. But for you young people, it kind of rolls downhill and you start needing less in life. And you crave simplicity. And, and that helps. That helps a lot. I just want people to not be afraid to reach out when they need it. And I'm talking about offline as well. Community programs. I know people that really need help and they, they're just too proud to ask for it. And, you know, and that's sad. I mean, how do we bridge that gap to say, hey, it's okay. It's okay. This is why these programs are in place. You can't fill out forms. You can't, you know, because of dementia or cognizant issues, ask for help. Don't be so embarrassed because you've got to tuck away your pride. Even the incompetent uh, programs that are in place, they're still there for you. And you know, take advantage of it. We all need a little help sometimes. All of us. Unless you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth and you still have it in your mouth, there's probably been one time or another that you needed help, whether you took advantage of it or not, I don't know. Or you have a loved one that needed help. And it's such a stress on family, you know? So it's almost like your duty to reach out and ask for help because your family may not be able to do it by themselves, even though they love you. How about hospice? There are people that refuse to go into hospice because they're going to be okay. They're in denial, total denial. So they're putting all that on their families to take care of them. I don't want my husband changing my diaper. <laughs> you know, I, 
I need him to work so he can pay bills. Um, yeah, I mean, we all know someone like that, right? They're usually elderly people. I don't know. We just hold on stronger as we get older. Um, I think that the most important thing about this is actually having dialogues. We don't talk enough. We have to normalize dying and not death, but dying. We have to normalize all the things that come with that. But in order to do that, we have to accept that we're all going to do this. Yes, I would love to just go in my sleep. It's harder on everybody else, kind of. I almost feel like it's not fair because you don't get to say your goodbyes, but everybody wants to just go when it's time. And nobody wants to stick around and suffer. But that happens. And if we could normalize the conversations, you know, I have another video just on this. I want everybody to know what my wishes are and how they can help me. But I'm not there yet. So while I can still breathe, I want to get that message out. People, you need to talk. Okay. I'm going to close and I love you all and thank you again for so much of your support in the past year and uh, I will talk to you very soon, I'm sure. Okay, be blessed. Bye.